Star winning at the races with Daily Racing Form's new Mobile Pass performances, featuring exclusive buyer speed figures and expert analysis and selections. Go to DRF.com slash best and get the power of DRF in the palm of your hand. Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer. Let's take a look at the field for the Pat Day Mile on Kentucky Derby Saturday at Churchill Downs. It's carded as race number nine, and it is at a one-turn mile. These are for three-year-olds, and Cezanne, the number one for Bob Baffert, he only sold for $3.65 million as a two-year-old in training last year. He ran last in his last race, Mike, the shared belief. He's the morning line favorite in the Pat Day but he ran into some really nice horses in the shared belief. And it's rare to see a horse finish last and earn a career best by her speed figure. Yeah, that's true. I mean, uh, as far as last uh, place finishes go, um, you can do a lot worse than that. He actually ran well in the shared belief last time against some good horses. We'll see. I, listen, whether you want to bet this horse as the favorite against this field as he breaks from the rail, um, I think that's a pretty big question. But this horse has looked pretty good in all three of his starts. Let's throw up the time form U.S. pace projector for this race. The seven no parole is going to make the lead in here, given an alert break. He went very, very fast last time out in the King's Bishop. He paid the price. He doesn't have to go as fast, I don't believe, in this race to make the lead. And it might be a completely different story for no parole. If he gets an easy lead, we've seen him do some really nice things on the track. No, that's true. I mean, if he can make his way to the front and not take too much pressure in here, I think that'll be hard for him to, to accomplish. But if he can do it, it makes him very dangerous. Let's talk about Cezanne, the expensive two-year-old in training purchase. Won his first two starts for Bob Baffert. They ran him in the shared belief last time out. He got right up close to 1,000 words. He was in with a chance at the 316th pole, and he just couldn't stay with 1,000 words and honor AP, who we'll see later on Saturday afternoon in the Kentucky Derby. All things considering, considering his inexperience, it was a good effort. I like him at shorter distances. I like him at a one-turn mile. It's all about him working out a trip from the rail. Yeah, no, I agree with all that stuff. I, again, I think his shared belief um, all in all was actually a good effort. Um, and I just felt like he got himself in sort of a compromising position there, um, mostly because Honor AP got sort of a weird ride. And I think it really affected this horse, um, who at the end of the day ran pretty well in there. We'll see. I, again, at a short price, breaking from the rail against this field, you know, I don't know how short I would want to go on him, but, but I think this horse is pretty good. His first two starts were actually really good, I thought. The number two, Echo Town, is a grade one stakes winner that has never been off the board for the Red Hot Steve Asmussen Barn. Let's watch his victory in the eight challenge Jerkins at Saratoga. He finishes ahead of three of these rivals. We see no parole on the lead getting tired. Tap it to win on the red cap. He's running a game race, but Echo Town is not only going to grind him down right here, he's going to get away from him in the final 16th of a mile. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, he wins it easily um, down to about the 316th pole, maybe a little bit past that. It didn't look like he was going to get there, but he just stayed on very gamely. Um, he's just a really good horse, Dan. He has not run a bad race yet. I suppose the mile should be well within his scope here. Um, so we'll see what happens. I can't say that I love him in here, but you know what? I didn't love him in the Jerkins either, and he won. Big price on the three, Shasha Shake Me Up, who's turning back in distance after running in the Iowa Derby. And I have to be honest, I didn't love the Iowa Derby as a race. I think this is a tougher spot than the Iowa Derby. I think cutting back to one turn could help him a bit, but he's going to have to probably run a lifetime bested down this field. I mean, he is. Um, and I guess the mile, we'll see if he's just a pure sprinter, Dan, or if he can get the one turn mile. He doesn't want to route. I'm pretty comfortable saying that. He doesn't want to go long. Um, but his sprint, I think his sprints are actually very good. I liked his win at Oaklawn um, back in April where he made a big run on the turn just to get into range and he stayed through the stretch. And listen, maybe last time on the dirt, um, the, uh, the last time they sprinted him, I mean, at Churchill, maybe they rode him for second in there. He was facing older horses. They sat last. He made a big run through the stretch to be second, though. And that CZ Rocket, his form cannot be denied right now. He's on a huge roll. Um, and this horse was a good second to him in there.
Some interesting points there to be sure on a big price horse. Vertical threat, the number four. Let's watch his last race because this horse has a tremendous amount of upside potential while taking a big step up in class. This is the Smiling Tiger, a restricted stakes race at Del Mar. It only drew a field of four, but vertical threat couldn't win this any easier. 92 buyer speed figure after making a three wide bid on the turn. This horse has a lot of potential, Mike, and I like that they're shipping him all the way across the country. I don't really mind him stretching out to a one-turn mile and i really like his tactical speed and his draw yeah no i i agree with all that I, his two dirt races are really good i mean who knows i don't think he was beating great horses either time i know he beat an odds on favorite last time but that seemed um you know just one of those things in a short field where that horse just wound up taking a lot of money this horse has really run in his two dirt stars. he's got to get a mile he's got to do it against much better horses but he's looked really good in his two wins Digital is a horse that when he turned back in distance two starts back, I was all over him at nine to one. His prior race at Oaklawn going a mile and an eighth, he made an early move into the teeth of the pace while wide and then flattened out in a race that went to closers. I thought turning back was just what the doctor ordered. He loomed turning into the stretch. I was counting my money and Echo Town just said, oh, no, you don't. I throw out the last race on turf. He is a one-turn horse at heart, but something tells me he needs the right setup. Yeah, he does seem like a horse who, who wants to sort of make one run. Um, that's what he did, two starts back. And you're right, that was, I mean, coming down to the eighth pole, it looked like he was going by for sure. He had all the momentum, um, and Echo Town just wouldn't let him get by. He still ran well in that race, though, Dan. He's going to be a price in here. Tap it to win has found himself, I think, is a true seven furlong to a mile and a 16th horse. I think he showed that three back at Belmont when he was a big winner in an allowance race. The Belmont was too far against too tough. And last time in the Jerkins, he made his move into the teeth of that pace and he stayed on very well to finish second. I think he's an underrated horse who just needs to find a little bit on the buyer scale. Yeah, I, I look at him the same way. I think this is the right distance for him, and they're running him in the right race here. Um, and we'll just see if he's good enough. I, I am starting to wonder if he'll ever run back to that 97 that he ran at Belmont. That was sort of his coming out party. He went right to the front, and he just buried a pretty good field when, when all was said and done with a big figure. He hasn't won it back in his last two races. I realize there are mitigating circumstances there. Um, we'll see if he can run back to it. If he runs back to it, he's very tough. No parole wired him in the grade one Woody Stevens two starts back, a race in which he just found himself alone on the lead and he was able to cruise on home. We saw the jerkins. He took pressure from the start. He really paid the price. He's a horse that doesn't change leads in the stretch. I wonder about the mile. I know he has the win at a mile at Delta around two turns, but I wonder about a stiff one turn mile with maybe some other pressure if that's going to be a little tough for him. But He's a bounce back candidate because he gets a better pace situation this time. Yeah, I think it is all about the pace, but I think your um, concerns about the mile, I think they're pretty well founded. You can't count the two turn Delta Downs uh, race there. He was, I mean, he had that field completely over a barrel. Um, he went the slowest of slow paces with nobody near him. I mean, that to me, that race does not count um, as far as seeing how far he wants to go. Can he do it against better horses? I think only if he gets loose on a slow pace, and I don't think it's happening. The number eight, Sonneman, passed some horses in the stretch of the Jerkins, but he had to, didn't he, considering the way that race fell apart? He is a true one-run closer, and the easygoer two starts back. It's a match race, so he stayed relatively close to Celtic Striker. Third start of the form cycle, I like him as a one-run sprinter, but I'm just not sure he gets the right setup. He got the right setup last time out, and he still couldn't finish fourth. Yeah, true. And he also got, I thought, a pretty good ride from Jose Lescano, too, because he stayed in and he got through on the rail. Um, he never had to lose any ground in that race, and he still never really made his presence felt. Um, I still like him a little bit, Dan. I think he does have more upside, but boy, is he going to have to improve quite a bit to beat this field. Completing the field's an intriguing turn back, and that's Rushy. And I think the shorter distance is going to work to his advantage. I thought he ran okay when overmatched against Honor AP and Authentic in the Santa Anita Derby. And in the bluegrass, boy, was he wide on the backstretch. He must have been five deep on the backstretch, four wide on the turn, and then he couldn't keep up with the good two. Art Collector, the next out 100 buyer winner. Swiss Skydiver, the next out 102 buyer winner. He fits with these horses, Mike, and I think he has a little bit of tactical speed. This turn back works for him. 
No, I agree with that. And he's, he's got the right running style. The shorter distance helps. And he's one of the few horses outside of the one, two finishers of bluegrass who actually made a run into that race. Um, he got a little tired at the end, but that's okay by me. I like him cutting back here. I think he's a major player in this race, Dan. Let's take a look at our top selections for the grade two. Pat Day Mile. Well, we're believing the hype, maybe. We both like Cezanne. I thought he ran better than a lot of people gave him credit for in the shared belief last time out, considering the competition, considering the inexperience, considering the trip. We'll go with him on top, but it's a fairly wide open race. I think so, too. We'll see how the wagering all shakes out. I'd be surprised if anybody was a super short price in here. Obviously, if they go, if everybody goes for Cezanne like we are and he's a short price, I wouldn't bet him in here. But I, I like this. Horse. I think he did run better than it looks last time. One six eight nine for Mike. One nine two four for me. We both got Rushy, the number nine in there in the Grade Two Pat Day Mile. We'll see if Cezanne can run to that big price tag in the Pat Day Mile.